All right, 9.6, remind yourself, is translating the various conics. So in section 9.4, we talked about ellipses, so horizontal ellipses or vertical ellipses. Now in 9.6, we're going to talk about ellipses again, but we're going to translate them. So they were centered at the origin. Now we're going to take them and shift them, you know, to the right, to the left, up and down. So maybe this ellipse is now going to be over here. So note the changes in your equations. Okay, first I want you to note what stays the same. You have an x squared and a y squared. Always still equals 1. a squared is still your larger number. And if it's underneath x, you're going to stretch in the x or horizontal direction. If your larger a squared is underneath y, then you're going to stretch in the y direction, hence it's vertical. Okay, that does not change. However, now you've got a center not at the origin. You have a center at hk. So, piece of cake, because we did this with parabola, so minus h minus k, right, that's going to give you where this ellipse is centered, if not at the origin. Okay, so pause the video and jot these down. So, this first one says to graph the ellipse, and these are divided by, sorry, so graph the ellipse. So x minus 1 squared over 10 plus y plus 4 squared over 25 equals 1. Okay, so first, I know it's an ellipse because it's an x squared plus a y squared, and it equals 1, so it's good to go in standard form. So first I would note that um, a squared is the larger number, so a squared is 25, which means b squared is 10. So because a squared is underneath y, I'm going to be stretched in the vertical direction, right? Okay, so my center is also hk. So the center is hk, and I know h is positive 1. Remember, it's always the opposite sign. k is negative 4, also always the opposite sign, right? So it's going to be positive 1, negative 4. So I'm going to start there. So I'm going to plot 1, negative 4. Okay, so 1, negative 4, and that's going to be the center of my ellipse. Okay, so I'll come back to that. And then I know in the y direction, I'm going to go 5 units, because if a squared is 25, a is 5, right? So in the y direction, I'm going to go 5 units from my center. Okay? blow this up again. So in the y direction I'm going to go 5 units up and 5 units down. In the y direction I went 5 units. Then my co-vertices are going to be in the x direction the square root of 10 units. So because b squared is 10, b is the square root of 10 and that's roughly 3, right? It's 3.1-ish. And that's all you can do is estimate this. Okay, so I'm going to blow up my graph. So from my center, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and a tiny bit more. And 1, 2, 3, and a tiny bit more. And those are my co-vertices. Okay, so let me just make sure this makes sense. So a squared was the larger number. And that means a is 5. So I'm going to go 5 units from my center. So I went 5 units up, 5 units down because it was below y. 10 is below x, and the square root of 10 would give me b, and the square root of 10 is approximately 3. So in the x direction from my center, I went approximately 3 in both, both directions, right? So technically, um, I have just graphed that ellipse. Um, other questions, however, that I'm going to ask of you is I'm going to ask you to list the vertices and covertices. Okay, so while sometimes you can simply see what they are from your graph. Sometimes it's not that easy. So my vertices are, I could just really count those points out, right? There's my vertices. But also note that your vertices are in the y direction, five units from my center. So I'm going to add five. In fact, I'm going to write this out. My vertices are one, negative four. I'm going to add five, and I'm going to subtract five. So that's going to give me negative 4 plus 5 is 1. And I can see that point right here, 1, 1. And if I subtract 
5, I'm going to get negative 9. And I can also see that point, 1, negative 9, right there. So those are my vertices. My covertices are a little trickier. The square root of 10 units in the x direction from my center. So I'm going to add it onto my x coordinate. So I'm going to have 1 plus or minus the square root of 10, negative 4. So again, I take that center point and I'm going to add the square root of 10 and subtract the square root of 10 from that x value, which happens to be 1. Okay. Last but not least, you might be asked to find your foci. Okay, so foci, remember, with an ellipse, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. I know a squared is 25. I know b squared is 10. 25 minus 10, of course, is 15. So that means c is the square root of 15. Well, your foci are always in the same direction as your vertices. So if my vertices are in the x direction, my foci are the square root of 15 from my center. Square root of 15 is almost 4, right? So from my center, 1, 2, 3, 4-ish. And from my center, go down, 1, 2, 3, 4-ish. And those are approximately where my foci are. If I ask you to list your foci, I'll squeeze them in here. Foci are in the y direction from my center, the square root of 15 units. So I take 1, comma, negative 4, which is my center, but my y value of negative 4 is going to add and subtract the square root of 15 because I go up and down the square root of 15 units from my y coordinate. And again, you'll be asked to find or list fo foci, vertices, and covertices. So make sure that that makes sense in addition to graphing. All right, lastly, write an equation of the ellipse with foci at negative 2, 3, and 4, 3, and covertices at 1, 4, and 1, 2. Now again, graphing is totally optional. However, I'm going to do this. So negative 2, negative 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 are where my foci are, and the covertices are at 1, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2. Okay, so I know that my, my uh, covertices are at 1, 4, and 1, 2. So since they're covertices, I know that this is going to be stretched not in the y direction, but in the x direction. Again, I'm just going to totally make this up. You know, it might look something like this. It's got to encompass those foci, right? Okay, so knowing that, again, I know that it's going to be a horizontal ellipse because it's stretched horizontally. So I know, and I know it's not centered at the origin. It's pretty obvious for many reasons. So x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals 1. And I know my a squared is going to be underneath my x because it's stretched in the x direction. So how in the world do you find the center? Well, if you think about your foci are always equidistance from your center, your covertices are equidistance from your center, your vertices are equidistance from your center, you get the idea. So essentially, I could just take my covertices and find the midpoint between them. So if I, um, obviously if I take my x coordinates and add them together, cut that in half, take my y coordinates, add them together, cut it in half, that's going to tell me where my center is. Okay, so my center is obviously at 1, 3. Now, you can see this from the picture, right? If you go over 1, up 3, really, you can pinpoint that that center is right there. So not that you'd have to do any harsh math that I just did. You can also find the center of the foci. So negative 2 plus 4 is 2, cut in half is 1. 3 plus 3 is 6, cut in half is 3. So any of the important characteristics, the midpoint of them, will always give you your center. So now I know h and k. So I have to figure out A and B. Well, A is the how many units away from my center in the x direction. Okay, so here's my center, 
in my uh, vertices. I'm sorry, I don't know my vertices. I'm going to go co-vertices. So A to my co-vertices, they're one unit away. Okay, I can also see that from my center to my co-vertices, 1, 4 to 1, 3, that's one unit away. Or 1, 2 to 1, 3, that's one unit away. So I know B is 1, hence B squared is also 1. Okay, so I'm going to fill in here what I know. I know H is 1, and I know K is 3, and I know B squared is 1. Okay, so H and K I got for my center, B squared I just worked through. Well, I don't know A because I weren't was not given my vertices, but I can figure out C by using the handy dandy formula. So C squared equals A squared minus B squared. And I don't know A squared, but I know B squared is 1. And I know C squared is the distance from my center to a focus point. Well, center, 1, 3, to a focus point. Let's say 4, 3. How far apart are they? They're 3 units away. Again, I can count it on my picture. I can see it just by looking. So C is 3 units, hence C squared is 9. And then if I add 1, I can see that A squared is 10. And I have my A squared. And that is the equation of this translated ellipse.